What's up YouTube, Christo here. I've got a special winter list for you guys. A lot of reviewers are putting out top 10 list, top 20 list, you know, top designer, top niche for winter. And I like doing top 10 lists and I wanted to put one out, but I didn't want to do my top 10. Um, I didn't want to be redundant and list a lot of frags that other people are mentioning, first of all. And second of all, I don't live in a country with winter and I haven't lived in a country that has a uh, winter season for a very long time. So I thought I'd do something a little bit different and I thought I'd look at uh, my top 10 under the radar winter scent. So these are 10 things that um, perhaps don't get as much attention in the winter time as they should. Now that said, some of these I have seen in top 10 lists and I have heard people mention for being used in winter but um, they're definitely not in the heavy hitters, okay? A lot of people are talking about Pure Malt, a lot of people talking about New Harlem, Dior Homme Intense, L'Instant, De Guerlain, Extreme, those are like the big ones, and those are great. Those are all absolutely fantastic scents, but um, I definitely think there's a lot of stuff out there that needs a bit more attention. So I'm ranking these uh, on how ideal they are for winter, how great the scent is and as well how often they pop up in top 10 winter videos okay so uh, let's get into it I'm gonna do all 10 in one video I should be able to have time so uh, let's start with number 10 this one is from an amazing house that gets a lot of attention especially right now uh, but this scent is basically in uncharted waters. There are a few mentions of it and there is a really great review for it on YouTube, so definitely check it out. It is worth checking out. Um, the reason I put it in number 10 is it's a little too masculine for me. It's a little too strong. Um, I need a little more time to appreciate this, but when I do, I'm going to love it, I am sure. That is Heritage de Guerlain. And this is the EDT version that I have. Um, this is very woody. It's very spicy, it's very masculine, very, very masculine. Um, it has a very classic feeling, but done in a very tasteful Guerlain way, which is why I really love this so much. Uh, a few years ago, I probably would have dismissed this completely as an old man scent, but um, I definitely have appreciation for it, but I just need a little more time with it, I think. Number nine, this is my old signature scent, so you probably know what it is right away. Um, it's very sweet, it's very strong, it has a few disputed notes in it. Um, I still enjoy it, although not as much as I used to. This is Paco Rabanne Black XS. A lot of people say there's rose in it, a lot of people say there's strawberry in it. Um, now that I've had a lot of time to use it, I definitely say it is just the lemon. Um, there's something in this that's just uniquely strange and synthetic feeling. Um, Paco Rabanne is very good at making bizarre but very intriguing synthetic scents and this is one of the best. I still like this a lot. I just don't wear it as much as I used to. Excellent for the winter. Maybe a little bit popular in some areas but um, it is still definitely a winter favorite. Number eight, I've done a review on this already, and I do enjoy it. Um, I just, I'm not really into one of the strong notes in here. Uh, this one is very under the radar. Very little talk about this anywhere. Um, in YouTube, there's only a few videos on it, uh, and it is Mandarina Duck Pure Black. This is obviously in the black, nighttime, noir, nui uh, market that a lot of frags are in now. Very popular market. Kind of sweet, strong, sexy kind of thing. Often worn at night or win in winter time. This one is good. Um, it has really nice tonka, vanilla, powdery, sweet, rich. Um, very nice, very under the radar. It is starting to get a bit of attention, so perhaps you might want to check it out. 
because next year it very well could be um, a very big send. All right, number seven. This one I've done a review as well. This is an amazing gourmand. I still enjoy this a lot, even though it has a vanilla note in it that I don't like, but um, the vanilla in here is done in a really interesting way. This is Jean-Paul Gaultier, Gaultier Squared. And this smells like scorched creme brulee. Well, creme brulee is meant to be scorched, but that's a feeling I get, like a creme brulee candy with a little bit of orange in it or something. Very, very good. I really enjoy this. Unisex EDP, and it definitely has EDP longevity and projection. Very good for the winter. Discontinued as well, and it has been discontinued for a while, so it will be pretty unique, I think it would be safe to say. Number six, number six, this is a real shame. This is an amazing scent from a very mediocre house, in my opinion. Um, this one, like many other fragrances from the house, unfortunately, more money gets put into um, advertising and uh, PR than it does for the actual scent. So uh, this one, uh, if this one wasn't so synthetic and lasted longer, I would probably put this in my top three. And that's Polo Double Black from Ralph Lauren. This is right up there with just absolute Christmas festive season feeling. Um, it's spicy, it's woody, it's got really interesting nutty feeling to it. Um, it also has sweetness from mango and uh, juniper berries, I believe it is. So great, but I only get like four or five hours longevity out of this. And you know, in the cold winter air, you need something that's gonna stand up much stronger than that. Um, if this was made by a better house or they put a little more effort into it, uh, this would be, I think people would be going nuts for it. Unfortunately, it didn't. Number five, one of my newest bottles. I'm in love with it again. Uh, it's very sweet. It's very strong. Um, it's very sexy, very unisex. It is men's, but a lot of women love this. Givenchy Pie. Uh, it's a very sugary, very, very um, heavy on tonka, and it's got a really nice nutty feeling from almond. The, the most common, well, the most predominant note to a lot of people is actually vanilla, but I genuinely don't really get a heavy vanilla feeling, if at all. I totally, totally get the white sugar and tonka bean from that. Very, very good excellent for the winter, but it is a bit popular. You will see that in a few people's top 10 videos. Number four, this is another very new bottle to me and I really enjoy this a lot. It gets compared to a classic quite a lot, but I think this one is head and shoulders above it. Van Cleef and Arpels uh, Midnight in Paris. Now this is the EDT version that I own. And it is very rubbery, like Bulgari Black, that it often gets compared to, but this has much more depth, much more character, um, and it projects more, and it lasts much longer than Bulgari Black. I like Bulgari Black, but I love this one. This one, um, as comparable as they are, this one is just in a whole different league from Bulgari Black. This is pretty new, so it doesn't have too much attention, um, there are a few reviews for this, and I'm pretty sure I've seen it in a top 10 winter video, but this is excellent for the winter, so I definitely had to put this in. All right, top three here. Uh, this one, this is also a popular scent, but because it is so great for the winter, I thought I had to put this in, and I had to give it a flattering spot. Um, I get a feeling of shortbread cookies fresh out of the dryer in this. Not the oven, the dryer, that's right. Um, such an interesting fragrance from a house that honestly I'm not a big fan of. 
This is Body Kuros from Yves Saint Laurent. This is a very, very interesting fragrance. Incense, eucalyptus. Um, it's, it's just so interesting. It's very different from the original Kuro, so don't let the name put you off. It is very sweet. It's very strong. It lasts all day long as well. Really, really enjoy this. Number two, this is a personal favorite. This has got a lot of nostalgia tied to it. This is discontinued now, which is a shame. And um, it does get a bit of mention here and there. It's from a really big house. And um, this one gives me a really interesting smoky ginger ale feeling. Um, I couldn't be talking about anything other than Gucci from, uh, Envy from Gucci for men. This is very strong, it's very spicy, very smoky, very masculine, very mature. Uh, this is old Gucci, perfect example old Gucci. This is the stuff that I really miss from that house. This is discontinued. Luckily I do have a nearly full bottle. I don't wear it very much because it is so heavy and spicy and smoky. Uh, it doesn't really work very well in the weather for me here, but I love it nonetheless. All right, number one, this one here, I am getting into this more and more and more. I love this lot. I haven't put this in a single video other than the haul video that I got it. Um, I believe this is discontinued. If it's not, it's very rare. It's pretty hard to find. Um, it is one of the best cinnamon designer notes I have ever smelled. Very prestigious house, um, very high quality. That's Jaipur Om from Boucheron. And I do have the EDP version, so to make things even better, it's even stronger than the EDT. I have tried the EDT. They are pretty similar, but um, I do think this one edges it out. This has an amazing cinnamon note. And I have to say, the first few seconds of this, um, when I do initially spray it, I definitely do get kind of an old man feeling. But the thing is, it does dry down, and when it dries down, the cinnamon in here is absolutely gorgeous. Um, this is so undiscovered, and I, there are mentions of it on YouTube, don't get me wrong, but for how amazing this is, and um, how much attention it gets, and how utterly perfect it is, for the winter time, this is an absolute gem. Um, I really wish this got more attention than it did. Uh, uh, the cinnamon, tonka bean, it's got cardamom, it's got benzoin. Uh, there are florals and citruses listed, but I really don't get them that much. Um, this is just really, really great cinnamon really great winter frag. I highly recommend checking this out if you um, are able to. It is absolutely worth it. You will not be disappointed. It is a bit masculine, but man, this is good. All right, there you go, guys. There's my top 10 under the radar winter frags. I hope you like it. I want some feedback. Um, people who wear these, people who like them for winter. Uh, maybe you don't agree, maybe you don't think they're under the radar, maybe you think they are too popular. I don't know, I'm always um, interested in hearing your opinions, so comment below and uh, thanks a lot for watching.